Just when you thought that launch season was over, Intel's like, but wait, there's more. Actually, Intel hasn't had much to say since last year, but they have plenty to say at the end of this year. <laughs> The all new IQ Link ecosystem for Corsair finally removes all the cable clutter from your PC. IQ Link components synchronize RGB lighting and settings between connected devices with a single wire, creating a chain of devices on a single port via the Link Hub. Take control of your system and ditch the clutter by following the sponsored link in the description below. So we've got, uh, today's video is gonna be talking about two different CPU launches coming up. So obviously we've got the Raptor Lake refresh which uh, Raptor Lake's 13th gen, if you're not aware. And we've got the upcoming Meteor Lake. So let's just start with the refresh because that's gonna be much sooner launch. Um, availability on that one is looking like it's gonna be October 17th, which is uh, less than a month away from where we are now. Um, but the important thing to note here is it's the same process. Uh, the naming convention versus 13th gen is identical. So for instance, we've got six SKUs coming out for the Raptor Lake refresh. We've got the 14600K, the 14700K and the 14900K. Now each one of those are also gonna have a KF variant. So basically an iGPU included or no GPU included. Um, but they basically are gonna be um, benefiting from a process manufacturing improvement. So as manufacturers start manufacturing a certain process, in this case, um, you know, you've got Intel, you've got TSMC, you've got Samsung. As they go along and refine the process, the yields get better, the performance gets better, the imperfections improve. So you can actually get better results at the end of the life of a CPU node or process versus the start. It's just learning along the way. Um, so what you're gonna notice here is a couple of things that have changed with Raptor Lake Refresh uh, 14th gen versus 13th. So for instance, right now the 13900K is 150 watt TDP. Now don't confuse TDP with power consumption. We'll talk about that in a second here. Cause I know right there people are like, what the hell? My CPU draws well over 300 watts. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a sec. But it's 125 watt TDP for the 14900K. Another thing worth mentioning is 13th gen 13900K had an up to 5.8 gigahertz um, boost clock with various factors limiting that. First of all, that's single core, not all core. And second of all, there's thermal velocity boost, um, there's a turbo timer, there's all sorts of stuff that would limit how far it would go and how high that would go. The number one limiting factor, to be honest, was the motherboard manufacturers and cooling. Motherboard manufacturers wanted to have um, the, the most reliability as they possibly could. They have their own enhancement features which could just bypass all the Intel safeguards on the CPU pushing the CPU farther, overvolting it, and then just letting thermal velocity boost handle the rest. So basically the motherboard manufacturer would say, hey, let's just push way more voltage, like, because typically like 1.25 volts or so would kind of be all 13th gen needs to get the up two speeds, but they would push like 1.45 or even higher sometimes. It would immediately go to its thermal limits, which is 90C and sometimes even go above that and hit up to 100C, because a lot of the times when they ignore the Intel limits, the motherboard manufacturer would raise the, the CPU um, TJ Maxx as well, and then you'd get those up two speeds for like a nanosecond, and then it drops back down to wherever the cooler can start to maintain that 90C. Um, that's a motherboard manufacturing problem. If you were to turn on all the Intel limits, you'd notice actually that's much cooler, the clock speeds would stay higher longer, but probably not hit the 5.8. But to get the up to 6.0, which we saw for a while there with 13th gen, required the KS model. Remember, KS started back with the 9900 KS, which stood for keep spending, because they had to find ways to continue to squeeze and wring more money out of the consumer. So they would add a couple hundred megahertz and add several hundred dollars to the price of it. Well, what's unique about the 13900 KS versus the 14900K non-S is the fact that they are up to 6.0. So now you're getting a 125 watt TDP versus 150. And you're getting the up to 6.0 on the single core versus the 13900KS. So to see a reduction in TDP and an increase in clock speed is the evidence right there that the process has been improved when it comes to the, uh, the current um, Intel Core i9s to i7s, etc. Um, another thing to keep in mind here is the TDP. So I mentioned the 150 watt on 13th gen. That is about a 253 watt power consumption limit. So TDP are thermal design power and power consumption are not the same. One is referring to specifically the kind of heat that is gonna be generated by the, the, the part. And another one is specifically how much power consumption it's gonna take 
to run the part at its advertised speed. So one is a power delivery thing and one is a temperature thing, a, a thermal excretion, I don't know what word to use, uh, thing there. So that's why 253 watts is where the max power consumption is out of the box Intel settings for the 13900K. Now that's at the 150 watt TDP. When those motherboard manufacturers put in their own special limits in there and their own little overclocking enhancements and stuff out of the box and don't tell you that they're on, which by the way, I still feel to this day, I don't care if it's Asus and they, they think their stuff sh doesn't stink and all their settings are the best or your Aorus Extremes or whatever, they need to ship out of the box Intel settings on. It, they should not be default core enhancements turned on. They don't know what the cooling solution is. They, you, just, you just can't by default. So that's why you would see folks saying my 13900K is overheating, which it could be because it could, with your cooler design and those new limits hitting up to 330 plus watts, we've seen our CPUs hit almost 350 watts out of the box. That's a problem. That's nearly 100 watts over the actual um, power consumption design of the CPU. Now overclocking, I've showed a million times, you can overclock and undervolt and get good results. You can get more performance and less temperature out of it by not having these, these limits cranked. Now, one of the reasons why the motherboard manufacturers will crank the limits on like 13th gen, especially when it's a new architecture like 13th gen was, um, although it was still based on 12th gen, which is a hybrid design of E cores or efficiency cores and P cores. Um, it's, it's about stability. You know, you crank the voltage as high as you can, you can, and then you let all the safeguards do the rest. It's going to be stable. It's just you might not be noticing you're, you could be losing as much as five, six hundred megahertz of your advertised speed because of the thermals and the voltage. So the TDP improvement is, is a nice to see. So I don't know where that's going to land, but typically I would say the, the 25 watt TDP reduction could be as high as 100 watts of actual power draw consumption or reduction. Um, 253 watts stock, I bet you it's going to be somewhere around 210 watts stock now, um, which means with the limits of the motherboard manufacturers, um, probably going to be closer to 300 versus 330. So a reduction is nice, but you still need to go in there and tune it, in my opinion, um, because the motherboard manufacturers are not doing you any favors by putting their own, their own things in there. Now regarding motherboards, it's pretty much guaranteed you're going to need a BIOS update to run these CPUs. Um, even though they are, for all intents and purposes, 13th gen CPUs with a new gen, even though there's not, a, it's not really a new gen, it's still Raptor Lake. It's just because it's the next one, they had to give it a 14th gen, even though there's no new gen improvement on there. Um, the new gen is actually with Meteor Lake, and we'll talk about that here in a sec. It's the, the biggest improvement here is going to be the TDP and the power limit and the increased core speed. 14th gen is already looking, based on leaks, there, there have been some like Geekbench 6 leaks, there's been some Cinebench leaks and stuff. It is showing to just be everything you would expect in terms of incremental improvements in the speed. Now the 13900K and the 7950X3D and 7950X non-3D have been trading blows back and forth depending on either rendering versus gaming. However, the 14900K seems to come in here based on these leaks and just say, move over everybody, you know, I've got this. Showing anywhere from a minimum of 3.5% um, performance increase over 13900K up to 15%. Unfortunately, the leak pricing though also appears like it's about 15% more expensive. So it's kind of following the Nvidia model of here's more performance, but you're gonna also pay the same amount of extra performance you're getting in cost, making it exactly the same performance per dollar. So anyone on a 13th gen CPU should absolutely positively not be bothered with trying to update. Even people on a 12th gen CPU should probably not even need to consider upgrading to a 14th gen. I think people that are maybe on 10th gen, 9th gen, or older could consider even like a 13700K or a 14700K and see massive improvements. Um, but unfortunately, 14th gen is going to have a price premium with it. So it looks like all of that process improvement, um, they want you to pay for it. Can't decide between performance or noise optimization for your next PC case? Then Be Quiet has you covered with their new Dark Base Pro 901. The interchangeable top and front cover allow you to choose either maximum airflow or virtually inaudible operation. Fan brackets with integrated hubs and pogo connectors make cable management easier than it's ever been, while a touch-sensitive front I.O. panel provides state-of-the-art operation. To see the full list of specs of the Be Quiet Dark Base Pro 901, see our full breakdown video at the link in the description below. So let's go and talk about Meteor Lake. 
Now, Meteor Lake, we don't have any like definitive details yet. This is a this was a high level. Here's what the new architecture is going to look like. Here's what we've been working on uh, for Intel. Intel's going to be dropping the whole Core i9, Core i7 naming altogether. They're now calling it Intel Core Ultra. And it's funny because they're, they also are now referring to it as Intel 4 and Intel 7. And now it's supposed to be based on the process, but Intel Core 7 is actually 10 nanometer and Intel Core or Intel 4 is actually 7 nanometer. So the Intel 7 is not the 7 nanometer, it's the 10 nanometer. All right, so the Intel 4 process is a 7 nanometer, the Intel 7 process is a 10 nanometer, which I've just said. Naming aside, honestly, one of those people don't care what they name something. They are claiming though, that a, there is a 20% better performance per watt uh, improvement right now. 20% more performance per watt than what's currently out there. So smaller design, better power uh, consumption and better performance per watt. I mean, that's a good thing. Like I said, Intel's 12th gen through 14th gen has been based on a hybrid design. Not a chiplet design, but a hybrid design where you have a row of E cores and you have a row of P cores. And the efficiency cores were very low um, power usage cores that were designed to ha handle like remedial tasks, background tasks, things that were not a priority for the system, uh, where you could save those P cores to be available for high intensive tasks. This is going to be something entirely different. They are gonna be using now a component, a 3D stacked component design, which they're dubbing as tiling. So instead of a monolithic design, which just basically means it's one thing that contains everything, uh, Meteor Lake is using what they're calling their Favaros 3D die, which is basically a tiling. Um, I don't know what Favaros means. I think of like Fevero, you know, like the Mandalorian, you know, Avengers. We have multiple um, top die and we put them on a single base die, and that base die serves mainly to interconnect all of those die. So we could take all the die, instead of building them on set, you know, one large die, we break them into smaller functions, and then we connect them um, with packaging. Back in 2017, Intel actually referred to uh, the Epic CPUs from AMD as just glued together CPUs. Uh, it looks to me now, based on this whole chiplet design, Intel might have like maybe found that glue to be compelling because they are now, instead of side-by-side -side gluing their chiplets together through a substrate or an infinity fabric, they're just gluing them top to bottom. Hey, Intel, glue is glue, whether it's next to or on top of. But whatever. There's actually, jokes aside and salt aside, this is pretty interesting and I'm really excited to see how this works out. I'm a little concerned because top to bottom stacked, as we now, as we obviously know, with um, like the, the 3D V-cache found on AMD CPUs, they're extremely sensitive to temperature. It's not the same as how AMD is doing it, where the, the stacked 3D V-cache or the X3D stuff, um, which is just the cache on top of the die, giving it a, a faster direct connection to the to the, the core architecture of the of the CPU. This one is. Uh, pretty unique in that what they're doing is they're tiling different components of the CPU, including like AI accelerators, which currently exist, but they're putting a lot more effort into making those AI, um, those AI cores, if you will, more useful on the CPU. But they can manufacture each one of these tiles independent from each other, bin them, test them independent from each other, and then build their CPUs out of pre-tested components, knowing basically exactly how it's gonna perform. Whereas currently, they'll build a monolithic design, which is just one die, has everything on it, and then they test it and go, well, this failed this test, but it bends down here. So instead of being a 13900K, maybe now it would be a 13700K, because that's where it landed in the binning. But now this means better yields, it means better performance guarantees, and it means being able to take advantage of varying processes. So for instance, they could, they could lean on having the core architecture of the CPU be Intel's in, Intel 4 7 nanometer design, but then they could use Intel 7's 10 nanometer design in other areas of the CPU. Meaning now when they move to a new process, they're not just completely omitting the old process, they can still utilize it in different ways. It also means that as the CPUs mature, they can upgrade different components of that process and make new products out of it. it. One, for the environment, I think it's good when it comes to waste because they're able to utilize way more of the, the throwaways, if you will, for other aspects of the CPU design. But it also means that they can basically start Lego blocking literally together um, different CPUs. So 
That stacking though, like I said, we don't know anything yet about what its TTP is gonna look like. They're claiming extreme efficiency. Obviously with them being stacked means we're gonna see increased um, response and reduced latency between the interconnect. Because when you deal with chiplet designs, the inherent drawback is now you have two separate things having to communicate. And on AMD, it's done through a fabric or referred to as the infinity fabric, where the communication goes down through the substrate or through the fabric and then into the other component. That distance, believe it or not, matters. So when they're stacked, it's much faster, um, which is why they also stack the V-cache for the CPU on the X3D CPUs. I'm curious though, as to how this is going to work in terms of cooling. Unfortunately, they're gonna be launching it in laptops first in December, boo, boring. I love laptops as much as the next guy, but we all know laptops will never perform anywhere as good as their desktop counterparts because although I could say this laptop is as good as or better than a four or five year old desktop, it will not be as good as the current gen desktop part of the laptop that they're debuting it in. So it'll give us some good indicators of what the performance uplift looks like versus like 13th gen Intel laptops, but the desktops are really all I give a crap about. Okay, so I'm really interested to see what the core counts are gonna be like, but more importantly, what is the overall performance and heat going to look like? One of the things we know specifically for the AMD X3, X3D CPUs is they have a lower TDP, they have a lower TJ Maxx because of the sensitivity of the stack design. But Intel is touting 50% reduction in power draw. Now, is that 50% of the 253 or 50% of the 300 and something that we've been seeing? Either, either way, any, any reduction in power proves if it's getting smaller and faster and less power draw that Moore's law is still in effect, which a lot of people have claimed is no longer a thing. Intel's like, yes it is, here's the proof. We've gotta wait till December to see the laptops, which means we probably won't see the first desktop parts and probably until around CES of 2024. Anyway, that's all I've got for you. There's a lot more going on with Meteor Lake, but I, this video is long enough as it is. Uh, that really goes into a lot of the like AI stuff uh, which personally I'm not that interested in, uh, but there's a lot of information out there that you can find. I'm thinking right now I might actually switch my gaming desktop at home over to an Intel 14th gen because of the TDP improvement, the core speed improvement, um, and honestly just because of the fact that I've been using the 7950X 3D for a while now, and I continue to have to fiddle with the memory because sometimes I get um, no boots. I'll get memory training that gets stuck for five plus minutes at a time when the, the PCU has just been running, I'll turn it off, come back to it later, turn it on, and it's like, oh, I don't know who memory is anymore, and it just forgets, and it's, it's really just get, kind of getting annoying that I have now have 6,200 megahertz memory in there that is AMD Expo that I'm running at 5,000 megahertz and leaving 1,200 megahertz on the table because my CPU just decides to, I don't know what I'm doing anymore, and I keep having to fiddle with it, and I'm really honestly getting tired of it. And we're talking BIOS updates and the whole deal, and it's just, I gave it a shot, but I think it might just be time to go back with what I know is working. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. If you wanna see an Intel build, maybe I'll, I'll do it. I'm sure we're gonna be doing an Intel build at some point on this. I've got some friends that want PCs built. When new stuff comes out, it's usually an opportunity to build something. So, all right guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.